In this section, we will talk about linear and absolute value inequalities. When our inequality is a less than or a greater than, we will use an open circle or a parenthesis to indicate that the number is not included. When our inequality is a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we will use a closed circle or a bracket to indicate the number is included. Negative infinity and infinity are always written using parentheses when writing an interval notation. So graph the following inequalities and write the solution set in interval notation, starting with x less than or equal to 6. So here, we want the set of all numbers that are less than or equal to 6. Less than or equal to 6. So first thing we have to determine is the number 6, is that number included or not included? So since x can be less than or equal to 6, 6 is included in our solution set, which means we are going to use a bracket. Secondly, we have to determine, is our solution set going to approach negative infinity, or is it going to approach positive infinity? Well, since we want the numbers that are less than or equal to 6, like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the numbers will get smaller and smaller and approach negative infinity. So our solution set will look like this. It's a set of all numbers from negative infinity to positive 6, including 6. x greater than negative 2. First question we have to ask ourselves is that is negative 2 included? In this case, negative 2 is not included because we want x to be the set of all numbers that are strictly greater than negative 2, meaning that negative 2 is not a part of our solution set. So we will have a parenthesis on negative 2. And this time, we want to set up all numbers that are greater than negative 2, like negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so therefore, these numbers are going to approach positive infinity. And we have to have an arrow at the end to indicate that the solution set uh, approaches positive infinity. Now, having said that, Let's solve, graph, and write the answer in interval notation for the following inequalities. The rules for sol solving inequalities are almost identical to those for solving equations, with two exceptions. Exception number one is that the variables must be on the left-hand side. In equations, it doesn't matter. We can put the variables on the right, on the left. In inequalities, the variables must be moved to the left-hand side. And then secondly, when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, then the inequality reverses. Okay, so once again, when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality reverses. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. Um, step one is to clear any fractions, which we don't have. Step two is to uh, distribute, which we don't have. Step three is move all the variables to one side. But in this case, because it's an inequality, the variables have to be on the left side. So we would add 3x to both sides. So bring down the 5, negative 12 plus 3x is negative 9x. Uh, gr greater than or equal to, negative 3x plus 3x is 0, and we have a negative 22. Next, move the 5 to the right by subtracting 5 from each side. So we have a negative 9x greater than or equal to negative 27. Lastly, since the x is being multiplied by negative 9, we divide by negative 9 since the inverse of multiplying is dividing, but look what's happening. We are dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative number. So when you multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative number, the inequality reverses. So our solution is going to be x less than or equal to 9. In other words, we want the set of all numbers that are less than or equal to 9. When we graph this, we have to locate 9, and so we need a, a couple more points here. We want the set of all numbers that are less than or equal to 9. So the first question we ask is, is the number 9 included in our solution set? It is because x can be less than or equal to 9, so th which means we're going to put a bracket on 9. And then 
since the numbers are getting smaller and smaller, they're all less than or equal to 9, um, the solution set is going to approach negative infinity. Numbers will get infinitely small. So we have a bracket on 9. Um, you, we want to set up all numbers that are less than or equal to 9, which means they are going to approach negative infinity. And in interval notation, we always have to write the interval notation as the lower and the higher value in our solution set. Okay, so in this case, our solution set doesn't have a lowest value because the, the numbers are going to approach negative infinity. But the highest value in our solution set is a 9 because the numbers don't go past 9. So we will put a bracket on 9, which means our answer is negative infinity, comma, positive 9 with a bracket. And for interval notation, we just have to follow the order of uh, of our graph. So here, uh, the graph approaches negative infinity, which means on the left side of the interval notation, we have a negative infinity. Here, we have a positive six. In this case, the lowest set, the lowest value in our in our um, graph is negative two, but not including negative two. So we have a parentheses negative two. And there is no highest value because the graph approaches infinity. So interval notation would be negative 2 comma infinity. OK, let's go to the, the next slide. Um, next, we want to solve graph and write the answer in interval notation. So um, step one, clear any fractions by multiplying all terms by the least common denominator. But we don't have any fractions to clear. Step two we want to distribute the 2. So we get 2 times 14x, that's a 28x. 2 times 14 is 28. 2 times 11 is 22. And that is less than 20 plus 7x. Next step, move all the variables to the left side. In inequalities, the variables always move to the left. So we subtract 7x from both sides. And this gives us 21x plus 22 that is less than 20. Now we move all the variables to the right. Sorry. So the variables, uh, I mean, sorry, the constants are going to move to the right. So we subtract 22 from both sides. And we get 21x. That's less than negative 2. And lastly, we divide both sides by 21. And in this case, because the number that we're dividing by is a positive, we do not re reverse the inequality. So the inequality is going to remain as a less than, which means our solution is x is less than negative 2 over 21. That is our solution set. Now, negative 2 over 21, you can convert that to a decimal. It's going to be uh, between 0 and negative 1, close to 0. That value is not included because we want the set of all numbers that are strictly less than negative 2 over 21. So we're going to put a parentheses on that value. And since we want the set of all numbers that are less than, the numbers are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So our solution set is it should actually be a little bit closer to 0. Our solution set look, should look kind of like this. We want the set of all numbers that are less than negative 2 over 21. In interval notation, our solution set approaches negative infinity. So our, we don't have a lower, lowest value. It's negative infinity. And um, the highest value is negative 2 over 21, but not including negative 2 over 21. So that is our interval notation. OK, the next example we will go over in class. Now, lastly, um, for this part of the video, we will talk about the intersection and the union of two sets. The intersection of two sets, A, and then the intersection sign is given by this upside down U, is a set of all elements that belong to both set A and set B. Whereas the union, denoted by A union B, is a set of all elements that are either in set A or in set B, or both in set A and set B. OK, so I'll get, here's what I mean by that. Let's say that set A is equal to the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and set B is equal to the numbers 3, 4, and 5. The intersection of A and B 
this is the set of all numbers that belong to or all elements that belong to both sets A and set B. And there's only one element that belongs to both set A and set B, which is 3. So the intersection of A and B will just be equal to 3. Whereas the union, it's a set of all elements that are in set B, set A, or in set B, or in both A and B. So that means anything that is in set A or B will be included in the union. So 1 is in set A, 2 is in set A, 3 is in set A, 3 is also in set B, so we don't have to write that. But remember, for a union, we're including all the elements of set A or all the elements of set B. So as long as the elements are either in, in either one of the sets, they have to be included in the union. So 4 and 5 are also included because 4 and 5, they are in set B. So for the union, we will include all elements that either occur in set A or in set B or both. Now, a compound inequality is formed by joining two inequalities with the word and or the word or. And is an intersection, and the word or is a union. So first, let's talk about compound inequalities involving the word or. We solve each inequality separately and then find the union, remember, or is union, of the solution set. When you have the word union, it means you include anything that's either in set A or in set B. So let's go ahead and quickly solve this. So we subtract 1 from both sides. We get negative 6x is less than negative 24. We divide both sides by negative 6. Because we divide both sides by a negative, the inequality reverses, and we get x greater than 4. On the right side, we simply just divide both sides by 2. But because we're dividing both sides by a positive, the inequality does not reverse, and it's going to remain as a less than or equal to. OK, so the word or has to come down each at, at each step. So let's graph this. Our solution set consists of all the numbers that are greater than 4, OK, that are greater than 4, or less than or equal to negative 4. Now remember, union, it means that our solution set consists of any element that's in set A or in set B or both. So basically, anything that's shaded is going to be in our solution set. So our solution set consists of all the values from negative infinity to negative 4, because those are shaded. So that's part of our solution set. Also, all the values from um, 4 to infinity. And because this is a disjoint set, we're going to join it using the union symbol. This tells us that our solutions can be any, any number between negative infinity and negative 4, or between 4 and infinity, but not including 4, because notice that over here we had a greater than sign. Therefore, 4 is not included. Now, next, uh, we are going to talk about compound inequalities involving the word and. The word and, it means that we're looking for the overlap or the intersection of those two solution sets. What do they both have in common? So here, we subtract 1 from both sides. We get 5x greater than 1. And here, there's an invisible 1. So if we divide both sides by negative 1, a negative divided by negative is positive. Because we divide both sides by negative, the inequality reverses. We have x less than or equal to 8. Oh, and here, I forgot to keep going. So we want the values that are both greater than 0 and less than or equal to 8. OK, so think about it. We want the values that are greater than 0 and at the same time less than or equal to 8. So greater than 0, it means we have 0 and we have all the values that are greater, so approaching infinity, and the values that are less than or equal to 8. So and at the same time, uh, this is 8 over here. We want the values that are less than or equal to 8. So that's going to go here. Now the word and refers to a union, uh, so to an intersection, which means we want the intersection of both sets. So where are they overlapping? Well, they're overlapping between 0 and 8. This is, what, this is where the two graphs are overlapping. This is what they have in common. Because here, it's only the blue graph. To the right of 8, it's only the red graph. They over overlap, they intersect between 0 and 8.